Greetings to you friends and brethren around the world. In our last video, I asked the question, so is God involved in this coronavirus epidemic? And does He have a purpose in allowing it? Now let me ask you, how real is God to you? I mean, is He real like your parents are real? Is He real like your children, your husband or wife? I mean, is He really living? And furthermore, is it only in a time of crisis, a time of great fear and pain, that all of us cry out to God for help? You know, I showed how God brought Job to Satan's attention and allowed him to attack Job. There was a purpose in doing this. Now notice the result of that terrible trial that Job went through. Job chapter 42 verses 1 to 5. Then Job answered the eternal God and said, I know that you can do anything and that no thought can be withholden from you. Who is he that hides counsel without knowledge? Therefore have I uttered that I understand not. Things too wonderful for me which I knew not. Here I beseech you and I will speak. I will demand of you and I will declare unto you. I have heard of you by the hearing of the ear. Now let me stop midway through that verse. Because that is where the problem is with all of professing Christianity. They have heard about God only by the hearing of the ear. The professing Christian clergy and ministers are teaching an academic theology based on false premises. A theology which they receive from theologians, scholars. Theologians who teach their own ideas about who God is and who Jesus is. They do not know the truth of the scriptures. They are shackled to the false teachings of the Trinity, of life after death in heaven, of Christmas, and all these false beliefs. And they are all contrary to the Bible's teachings, and they are absolute lies. Yes, lies. Now let's notice. Let's notice the rest of that verse 5. I have heard of you by the hearing of the ear. Now notice what Job says after his terrible experience. But now my eyes, my eyes see you. After his terrible trial brought on by the God of this world, Satan, after the pain God allowed him to endure, he finally saw who God really is. And because of that, he says in verse 6, Wherefore I abhor myself and repent in dust and ashes. Do you understand the result of knowing who the true God is? Notice that verse in the easy to read translation, and I repeat. And I am ashamed of myself. I am so sorry. As I sit in the dust and ashes, I promise to change my heart and my life. Note what Job is saying. Once his eyes were opened to see the invisible God, he came to see what he is what his human life was in comparison to the great God. Yes, he saw himself as just so much vanity. So let me ask, how do you as a human being see the invisible God? My dear friends, it begins with a genuine love for God. Paul explains it in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 9 to 12. Verse 9, but as it is written, I has not seen nor ear heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. Did you notice what was said? Did you hear? God has prepared something for those who love him. And verse 10, but God has revealed them unto us who love him by his spirit. 
For the Spirit searches all things. Yes, the deep things of God. Now, so to understand what, what God has prepared for humanity, a person has to have the Spirit of God in him or her. Why? Well, verse 11 tells us, For what man knows the things of man save the Spirit of man which is in him? Even so, the things of God knows no man but the Spirit of God. You and I have a human spirit in us. Go, please go visit, see our video, The Spirit in Man, on our website. Now, the human spirit has to be impregnated by God's own Holy Spirit. What do I mean? Well, it's similar to how a single male sperm enters into a female egg, which has been made ready to receive it. And thereby, once it penetrates, it begins a new life. And we human beings have to get ready to receive the Holy Spirit by repenting from what we are and get baptized, which is symbolizing our willingness to die for Christ and be buried with Him in a watery grave. Verse 12, Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. The Spirit of the world. What's that? Well, let's turn to Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 2. And understand this is the Spirit of the world. Verse 2. When times passed, you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the Spirit, yes, Spirit, that now works in the children of disobedience. Did you hear that? It is the Spirit that works in the children of disobedience. It is Satan's influence on the human spirit. The Spirit Paul wrote about in Romans 8, Verses 6 to 8. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace, because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then, they that are in the flesh, carnal, without the spirit, cannot please God. The human mind, without the addition of the Holy Spirit, is a carnal, fleshly mind which cannot please God at all. Now back to 1 Corinthians 2 and verse 14. But the natural man receives not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. This is the reason why theologians teach foolishness because they have not received the Spirit of God. Therefore, they do not know the great God, nor Jesus Christ. And the result of their teachings? Nonsense. Absolute, non-biblical rubbish. They fill people's minds with false pagan beliefs derived from their own minds. Beliefs such as the Trinity, going to heaven, Easter, Christmas just to name only a few. God is allowing Satan, the God of this world, to bring man to the realization that his own ways do come back on his head and they punish him through his lawless, his immoral way of life, which eventually, eventually, brethren, leads to his death. Faith and trust in God is paramount for salvation. One question, God is faithful to perform all the promises He has made to His people. He is merciful, forgiving, always alive and on hand to help His people. He's holy, just, eternal. He's loving, He's perfect in all His ways. Now again, no one who thinks himself a Christian argues with this view of God. But on the other hand, man in his natural state, man, is just the opposite. He is weak, he's vile, he's drawn to evil, fallible. The wickedness of man is so great that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart are only evil continually. 
full of vanity, lust, and greed. The best of them is as a briar, and the most upright of men as a thorny hedge. David sums it up for us when he says in Psalm 53, verses 2 to 3, The fool has said in his heart there is no God. Corrupt are they, and have done abominable iniquity. There is none that does good. God looked down from heaven upon the children of men to see if there were any that did understand, that did see God. Every one of them is gone back. They are all to become altogether become filthy. There is none that does good. No, not one. Now, if this is what Scripture reveals about our relationship with God, then every human being in, is in this state of filthiness and cannot please the great God, neither can he be God be their God. So what can you do to receive God's Holy Spirit to enable you to have a close righteous relationship with God and His Son, Jesus Christ. Let me first explain something. A Christian is one who has repented and in whose mind, up here, dwells the Holy Spirit of God. Otherwise, that person is not Christ's. He's not a Christian. So to be Christ's, to be a Christian, you need to repent you need to turn your life around 180 degrees. You have to change your thinking, your way of life. You have to learn what the true gospel of God is. Jesus did say in Mark 1 verse 14. Now after that John was put in prison, Jesus came into Galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God. Then he said in verse 15, The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Why? Repent. Repent you and believe the gospel. Please read these booklets which you can download from our website. Is God a trinity? Just what do you mean conversion? Just what do you mean kingdom of God? What is the true gospel? We will continue to teach the truth. Yes, the truth from God's word. We'll teach the truth regardless of disagreement, of scoffers or mockers. Now there will be more in our next, next video to show you how you can be protected in a time of crises. You may also vis visit our website, vigilancyog.com. So until next time, this is Michael Venish for the work of Jesus Christ in this 21st century saying, Goodbye, brethren, and goodbye, friends.